Hello everybody and welcome to another Twilight Zone review. Today it is Season 5, Episode 21, Spur of the Moment, written by Richard Matheson and starring Diana Highland as Anne, Robert Hogan as Robert, and Roger Davis as David. And this is a solid Twilight Zone episode. I like the concept behind it. It's thought-provoking and interesting. And it has a nice twist partway through that works very well. Unfortunately, this doesn't quite hit great episode status as I feel... A few of the scenes are just a little bit too over dramatic. I know what they were trying to do in the context of the episode, but I thought this could have been handled a little better. And there's a few questionable things about some of the logic in this episode, but it's a solid episode overall. So we start with our main character, Anne, and she's a young woman of 18, I believe, and she's riding her horse, and everything's going well until she sees another version of herself riding all in black, whereas her horse is white and she's mostly in white. This is pretty unique and pretty interesting and the writer is telling Anne to wait trying to warn her of something but we don't really know what at this point Anne gets scared and rides off home so that's a nice setup for our episode so Anne gets home and her parents are there and her fiance whose name is Robert and she's upset she says this woman was chasing her and trying to run her down and she thought the woman was trying to kill her this is one of those parts I was talking about maybe a bit over the top but it works in the context of the episode we also find out at this point that Anne didn't know her and her fiance Robert makes a bad attempt at humor here that doesn't work leading us to believe he might not be all that great which is a nice mislead about the episode, a nice little subtle detail here. And Anne just keeps insisting this woman wants to kill her, and her father calls the police. And this guy's a bit overbearing as well, and, you know, he says, we'll catch this woman, whoever she is. So then the doorbell rings, but it's not the woman. It turns out it's someone that Anne used to go with, I'm assuming. His name is David, and this guy's very pushy. He basically barges his way into the house, and Anne's father says, keep away, you better get out of here, or I'll I'll make you leave. I thought this whole thing was a little, both guys were a little over the top here. So the father tries to stop David, but he does come in and he says, I want to hear it from Anne that she wants nothing to do with me. So he pleads with her and says he loves her and she doesn't really want to tell him to leave. And the father says her silence is her answer. Uh, not really. That's not really an answer. I'm just saying. So it gets to the point where Anne's father pulls out a gun, basically, and basically threatens this guy, which, again, I thought, the, the whole scene just a little over dramatic. I get the effect that it'll have later in the episode, but it's a little bit, I thought it was a little over the top. So Anne's scared, and she basically leaves the room, and David's probably for, uh, basically forced to leave the house at this point, and Anne's father and Robert smile like they just won a prize or something. Again, a nice mislead making you think that they're wrong about this whole thing. And that Anne should be with her true love, David, which we'll find out isn't true pretty soon. So now we go forward in time, um, and the woman in black comes to the same house. And now she's definitely clearly Anne, if we didn't know it before. I thought this whole thing could have been handled better if we would have found out here for the first time that this was Anne, instead of knowing it very clearly at the beginning of the episode. Uh, just something interesting to think about there. And Anne is talking to her mother, who's now a lot older, as we'll find out Anne is now 43, I believe. So a lot of time has passed. She's definitely not happy. She's drinking. She's pretty mean to her mother. Uh, they slap each other, which, again, I thought was a bit much. Um, she basically blames her father for everything, leading us to believe she probably married Robert, and it turned out poorly. The only thing is that we find out as that she actually married David and that he basically ruined everything and now she's going to lose her house as well, but she doesn't care. And I got to say, this version of David is pretty bad. This guy comes out and he's mean, he's rude, and he's just about strange. The way he looks at her is just flat out weird. So she then realizes that she saw herself and it refers to the beginning of the episode and that she was the 43-year-old version of herself was trying to warn the 18-year-old version not to marry David and to go with Robert. So the twist of the episode is that the right person to marry wasn't her supposed true love David, but it actually would have been Robert. So that's a cool twist. It plays on the whole thing that people should always, you know, marry for their true love when they're young. It, whether you agree or not, kind of an interesting twist, kind of plays off our expectations as an audience. I liked it. So at this point, we go back to an 18-year-old Anne, and when Robert leaves for a minute to go get her something, I believe, David comes back, and we see that Anne did decide to 
decide to run off with him. So we see how that all turned out. And then we go back to one last scene with Anne at 43, and she runs off. She wants nothing to do with David. And then we basically go back to the beginning of the episode where the 43-year-old Anne is trying to warn the 18-year-old Anne. And we know this will just continue on because obviously the younger Anne is scared of the older Anne and didn't realize that it was herself and didn't take her advice. Now, my question is, did she not get a good look at her? It's pretty clear that they're the same person. How did she not recognize herself? I thought that was a little bit odd. I guess she didn't get a close enough look. And also, like I said, a few scenes are a bit over dramatic. And I don't think it's a problem with the episode, but just something else to think about. How do we know that marrying Robert, what would have happened? How do we know that he would have been a good choice either? Do we just assume that? Kind of an interesting thing, but overall, this is a good, solid episode that's thought-provoking, and I give Spur of the Moment a 3 out of 5. Definitely an episode worth watching once. It's pretty good. So a 3 out of 5 for Spur of the Moment, and as always, thank you very much for watching.